Okay, so now we 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 go to the new topic, which is we have the continuation of uh derivatives of uh <coughs> functions. Okay, so here we have the topic on directional derivatives. So what can you understand with the word derivatives? So the word of derivatives is something differentiation. So now uh, let's say we relate this with the uh, partial derivative that we have learned. You have learned in uh, math method uh, 2 where <clears throat> if you are given a function of two variable, so you can evaluate the f, x and f, y. So what is f, x and f, y? So from uh, our previous lesson, so, so this note I'm taking from the uh, chapter 4, partial derivatives in uh, method 2. So because I teach you, so uh, of course I already mentioned to you previously, last semester, uh, the, graphical the graphical representation of the partial derivative f respect to x means that, um, okay, so let's say you have a, a function of two variables, so the you have a surface in in the gray color here okay so now uh, at this point you want to determine let's say the slope okay the slope uh, at this point so the the slope of the line which is tangent line is given by red okay so <clears throat> so now uh, uh, let's say now we assuming we want to compute as we know that the the differentiation uh, of the function with respect to x or y actually we are computing the slope or the rate of change with respect to x or respect to y so here meaning that uh, you want to know the slope or the rate of change in the direction of the x axis so in this case you have fx okay so for this one you have the fx okay which means that only x changing but y constant uh, and uh, the graphical diagram of the partial derivative f respect to y is you can see that you want to uh, you want to uh, evaluate the slope or the rate of change of the function at the point given in the direction of y, which means that only y changing but x fixed. So uh, we can see that um, the f x and the f y that we have here. Is actually the derivatives, the derivatives in the direction of x and f y is the derivatives in the direction only y. So this is a uh, specific on along the x axis or along the y axis. Okay. Um. How about okay? Let's say I give you uh, an arbitrary uh, sketching, which means that let's say um. We have a 3D surface given by uh, this one. Okay. So now let's say I'm, I'm choosing the point over here. So uh, what is fx and what is fy? So this one is z and this is x and this is y. So, um, so you want to e evaluate the slope of this line which is... Uh, parallel to the x axis so this one is actually how can you compute the slope so you can just evaluate the fx let's say your point here is at 1 2 3 i'm just uh, uh, choose a random uh, number here so now how can you determine the slope uh, at the point 1 2 3 in the direction of x axis so you evaluate fx at the 1 2 3 so meaning that if you if your result is positive, so you are going down. So at this this point, uh, follow this uh, direction along the x axis. So you are going down because of your fx is your slope is negative. But if your slope is positive, the result here is positive. So you know you know that in that direction you are going up. So let's say you imagine you you are now climbing up climbing up the hill. Okay, but then. Now, uh, on the same point, at the same point, 1, 2, 3, you want to evaluate the slope uh, in the direction of uh, a y-axis. That way. So, now, uh, how can you evaluate that? You have to find out the partial derivative f respect to y 
at the point 1, 2, 3. So you will get a value. So you, we know that if it is positive, so the rate of change or the slope, uh, if it is positive, so it is something um, increasing or going up. So you know that if you're climbing up the hill and you want to follow this direction, so you are supposed to be need to climbing up. Okay. Uh, how about if you want to uh, at the same point, but you want to have a different direction? Maybe you are interested to know what is the thing I have to face next if I follow this direction. Then your starting is at one two three. So. Let's say uh, the direction is, uh, of course, because we're talking about vector function, so given, given by a vector u1, for example. So, what is the uh, slope or the, or the slope or the rate of change if I'm using this direction? Uh, maybe you want to know the direction. No, you want to know the slope if you follow this direction. So, let's say given by u2. And then maybe you are interested to know uh, what is the, the, the slope if I'm using that direction or maybe that direction. So this is u3 and this is u4. So meaning that um, uh, in this case, you are interested to know or to evaluate the, uh, the rate of change or the slope uh, on the uh, function given so let's say this one in general it is given by uh, z is the function of x y at the specific point in this case i'm choosing one two three actually it can be it can be any point so but in the specific direction so for that we call that as a directional derivatives where your your derivatives follow some uh, direction so you must have direction so before this, we don't bother about the direction, you just evaluate. Okay, so now we want to know what is the formula that we need to apply so that we can determine the rate of change or the slope um, based on the direction given at the specific point. Okay. So the idea is... Um, Okay, here, let me just hold on. Okay, so the idea here is uh, we want to evaluate the derivatives which follows uh, some direction of uh, vector function. Okay, so now how can we obtain the formula? So here, uh, in the notes, I provide you the, the idea. Okay. So, uh, uh, our uh, intention is we want to find the rate of change or the slope of the function. So, so this is the function um, of z is the function of x, y. Okay, so that is the function and that is the, the uh, surface um, for any direction. So, we pick a unit vector. So, let's say... Um, we have the unit vector. So, so let's say this is the vector. Okay, we know that uh, vector here is uh, will give you a direction. So, um, so this is the vector u. Okay, uh, vector u. Where there is a u1 and u2, which is the component of unit vector u. Okay, so now, uh, so we choose a point x not y not so let's see here the point that i have i choose here randomly so located over here so that one is x not y not so meaning that uh, here we have the point of x not y not and z not okay so the point on the surface so we have a z not so then we take the vertical plane so you can see that one, uh, we have a plane, so vertical plane, okay, so that is the plane uh, in the direction of U, so follow the direction of U, uh, which passes passes through the point of uh, X0, Y0, Z0, which is this one, right? So this is the plane. So the intersection, the intersection of this plane, the yellow one here, and the function Z will give you 
so you can see the curve there so you can see the curve so i i redraw so you can see the you can have the curve okay the intersection between the the uh, the plane and the surface z will give you a curve in white here so now we want to evaluate the 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 slope of this curve at the point of x naught y naught z naught okay uh, in the in the direction of u u which is the component is u1 and u2 okay so the the slope of this curve so the slope of this curve is given by the blue line here so you can see the the blue line there so maybe i have to use a different color so that you can see that clearly mm. so that is the line so that is the the line where the point that we have is here so that is the point okay so uh, what is the formula for us to determine the slope or the rate of change at this point in the direction of unit vector u okay so that is the idea here so we need the formula so we need the formula to obtain that okay so in this case um, we uh, we we choose a, a point Okay, so at x not y not, uh, and we'll give you z not here. So on two D on x y plane we have x not y not. So let's say we choose any any uh, point uh, to the along the along the um, along the curve. Okay, so so let's say the curve the curve uh, here. So we choose a one. A point and then when we do a projection so the point is there so that is belongs to x y and this one supposed to be uh, this one x y and then z okay so this is x y okay so now um, we know that uh, we can have the vector so uh, based on these two points we can have the vector okay where how can we have a vector from two points so we just subtract the x and the x naught and also y and the y naught so we have this one right so uh, we have this one okay um so this is the vector so x minus x naught and y minus y naught where it is parallel to uh, the vector, the vector uh, u. Okay, so then we can say that um, the vector of given by these two points is uh, parallel, so parallel equal to the unit vector you given. So because it is parallel, so we have to put the h. So uh, this one can be expand to be h u1 and h u2. So now we can write down the interaction okay so for the x component so you can okay so for the x component here so you have x minus x naught equal to h1 and then for the y component y minus y naught equal to h2 where then you can rewrite x in terms of x naught and u1 you just rearrange to and you will get this uh, relationship okay so then when we uh, when we uh, relate that uh, so meaning that the point here becomes closer and closer if the h becomes smaller and smaller and approaching to zero right because if h uh, have, uh, if h is very very small so the y and the y naught so y and the y naught become closer and closer so now we relate with the formula the uh, formal definition of derivatives in this case um, uh, if if we have uh, so if we have a 
fx and fy. Just a good fx and fy. Hopefully, I have the definition here. Just a second, I have to find it. We have that here. Okay, so um, this one from the definition. Okay, so the formal definition. If we want to find the derivatives uh, in the direction of x, so we just change the x but y fix in the direction of y. Only y change but x fix. But in this case, uh, x and y are changing uh, due to the change due to the 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 direction okay the direction uh, which based on the vector function given so uh, in this case so this one is actually belongs to the x component and this one is belongs to the y component you can see there is a changes of the uh, x component and the y component okay uh, and uh, it depends on the vector that we have which is in terms of unit vector okay if you are given a vector then you have to find the unit vector of that of that position vector first or for that uh, particular vector function first so the formula here you need to use the unit vector okay so that is something that you have to take note okay so uh, so what is the formula then so it's based on this theorem so the directional derivative so uh, directional derivatives then is the name direct directional uh, derivatives so in using the symbol you have the capital D and then uh, directional derivative of of the function xy so this one can be represented using the uh, symbol d u. So u here stands for unit vector. F is the function. Okay. So d u f. So uh, in in language we can uh, call this as directional derivatives of the function f in the direction of unit vector u. So we have d u f. So the formula here you can see that. We need to apply the uh, uh, partial derivatives because you have two variables here, fx, u1. So you know that u1 and u2 is the component, uh, the the component of the vector of the unit vector u. Okay. So if you don't remember, this is okay. But the important thing here, uh, the duf here is actually, uh, then you can write down this one is to be what is fx so this one you can see a vector right fx fy so this one is actually uh, the the gradient f so the gradient f will give you fx and fy and then you can see the dot product of the unit vector so that is the formula of the directional derivative so meaning that what we have here is this so the directional derivatives of the function in the direction of unit vector u is given by gradient f dot u. u here must be a unit vector. And f here is a scalar function. Okay. Gradient f dot u. So that is the formula of the directional derivative. So you have to take note. So this is not given. You have to memorize this. So if you don't remember this one, you don't remember that is okay because this one is actually the 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 ex, the the expansion of the gradient f dot u so but this one you have to memorize gradient f dot u so that is a directional derivative so you want to evaluate the slope or the rate of change uh, of the function in the direction of unit vector u so this is the formula so to understand how can we use the formula and to solve this particular problem so we look at the exam example 24 okay so you are given the function okay. 
so your uh, scalar function is given by uh, 3 minus 2x square plus y cube okay and you are given the point you have to find the direction derivative at the point 1 2 uh, in the direction of you are given a unit vector unit vector is given by 1 over 2 minus 3 over 2 it is already in the unit vector so you don't need to find the unit vector okay already in the unit vector so the formula is so directional derivative of the function uh, at the point of 1 so the formula is gradient f dot u. So what is the gradient f? Uh, fx, fy dot. So the component of unit vector. Negative so 3 over 2. Okay. So here you need to find out the partial derivatives. So you have minus 4x. Uh, plus 0 and then uh, fy you have 3y square so minus 4x 3y square dot 1 over 2 minus 3 over 2 so dot product then the answer will be a scalar form so you have to multiply 1 over 2 plus 3y square minus 3 over 2. So you will get minus 2x minus uh, 3, so 3 over 2y square. So you have to substitute the value then. Minus 2, 1, negative 3, so 3 over 2, 4. Then you have minus 2, um, minus 6, so 3. You can answer, leave your answer in this form or you can evaluate. So if, we, if the question asking for leave your answer in let's say one decimal please so you will get minus 12 over a uh, minus 12 uh, point four. okay so in this case uh what we can have here if you're talking about the slope so we know that if you uh, on the surface at the point of one two in the direction uh, of the unit vector given so the slope is negative meaning that we are going down or maybe we are talking about the rate of change so the process um, the, let's say the chemical process using that direction at this point is become uh, uh, decreasing okay so that is for the example 24 so now we look at the example 25 So what is the thing that we have to obtain? Directional derivatives. Okay, so now your function is three variable function. So uh, also possible. Okay, uh, but then you just add another component which is that. So the function given. You have a three variable function where it is given by x, x sine of y z. Uh, the point given is at 1, 3, 0. And uh, okay, the vector is not yet in the unit vector. But the direction of the vector V, 1, 2, mm, minus 1. Then you have to find the unit vector of this. So we have to find its magnitude divided by its magnitude. So, 4 plus 1 plus 1. 
so we have 1 over square root 6 2 over square root 6 minus 1 over square root 6 okay so now we want to obtain the directional derivatives of the given function x y z at the point 1 3 0 so the formula is gradient f dot u so what is the gradient f fx fy fz dot u1 u2 u3 okay so here you have to find the fx you have to find the fy and you have to find the fz so fx so x just outside sign so we just have sign of yz and then fy y is inside the sign so you have to apply the direction rule uh, so we have x cos of yz and then differentiate yz with respect to y will give you z okay and then fz also x cos yz and differentiate yz with respect to z you will get y okay so then you have to um uh you have a dot product so fx u1 plus fy u2 plus fz u3 so then we substitute uh, sine yz sine yz multiplied by u1 so u1 is 1 over square root 6 plus fy we have uh, zx cos of yz multiplied by u2 we have 2 over square root 6 and then we have plus fz is yx cos of yz u3 we have negative 1 over square root 6 so then you have to evaluate okay so uh, yz so z is 0 so sine 0 you get 0 we will get 0 plus zx so zx z is 0 uh, so these are everything's also 0 and then uh, yx so yx you will have uh, 3 so 3 cos z is 0 so cos 0 and then uh, multiplied by negative square root 6 so cos 0 is uh, 1 then you will have negative 3 over square root 6 where then you will get um, negative 1 point two two four four seven okay we have if you're talking about the slope we have negative slope we have something going down or if it is about the rate of change so the process becomes uh, decreasing or becomes slowly Okay, let's say I add one more example regarding the directional derivatives. So, the question is, consider uh, the scalar function uh, phi is given by x square y z cube 
in to point and the point is at P which is 2, 1, minus 1. So, the question is find the directional derivatives uh, of the function phi at the point given 2, 1, minus 1 in the direction uh, of the vector so vector i minus 2g plus 2 k okay so you have to find the directional derivatives of the function scalar function given at the point one two one minus one in the direction given so your your vector function here is not uh, in a unit vector yet then you have to find it so then the, to get that so the solution is you have to find the unit vector first where one minus uh, one minus two two divided by its magnitude which is one plus four plus uh, four so you have one over three minus two over three and two over three okay so to get the directional derivatives of the function given uh, x y it's supposed to be x y z at the point uh, 2 1 minus 1 is given by gradient phi dot u so then the formula here is uh, find the phi x phi y phi z and then multiply by the uh, u1 u2 u3 okay so then you have to obtain the phi x u1 plus phi y u2 plus phi z u3 okay so you have to obtain the phi x phi y phi z Okay, so uh, what is the phi given? So the phi is given by um, x square y z cube. Okay, so phi x, you have 2x y z cube. Phi y, you, you have x square z cube. And phi z will give you uh, 3x square y z square. Okay, so then we substitute here 2x y z cube. U1 is 1 over 3 plus x square z cube minus 2 over 3 plus 3x square y z square 2 over 3 2 over 3 and then we need to substitute uh, for the specific value uh, so to make it easier actually you can evaluate here so you have 2, uh, two 1, and then minus 1 cube. So you have minus 4, right? Minus 4. And this one will give you 
4 minus 1 cube so you have minus 4 as well and this one 3 4 1 minus 1 square so you have 12 so when we evaluate here we have minus 4 1 over 3 minus 4 minus 2 over 3 and then 12 2 over 3 okay so when we evaluate that we have minus 4 over 3 plus uh, 8 over 3 so this one becomes 4 4 2 becomes uh, 8 so 8 um, 4 over 3 plus 8 then we have 24 plus 4 over 3 uh, 28 over 3 okay so that is our answer so this is the directional derivative of the given um, scalar function at the specific point in the direction of the vector v vector given so the answer is uh, 28 over 3 okay so let's say i add another question which is number two which is uh, from the same information here but now we have the uh, I have I put another question so the question here let me copy first okay so the instruction here uh, based on the information given we are given the scalar function uh, phi and the and the point okay the first question asking for the find the uh, directional derivatives uh, in the direction given but now the second question is they ask about the direction okay what is the direction uh, uh, so that we have the maximum and also the minimum of the directional derivatives uh, from the point the same point which is 2 1 1 and then after that they ask for the magnitude so meaning that the second question here asking for the vector uh, when the, the the keyword here they use the uh, what what direction so this is a vector okay the direction so give the vector so the answer here is a vector and then when you know the vector so you can evaluate the magnitude okay so the most important thing here how can we determine the direction which is a vector so that we have the maximum and a minimum value of the directional derivatives um, so what is the difference between the first question and the second question so the the first question asking for the uh, the value of the directional derivatives in the specific direction so for example um, in a uh, so this is your 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 surface of the uh, function phi given okay so now you are at the point of uh, what is it the point of 2 1 minus 1 2 1 minus 1 so you want to evaluate the slope or the rate of change in the direction of the vector given so the vector given is uh, i minus 2j plus 2k so let's say the the, the the direction given uh, in this case is uh, this way okay so that is the vector vector given so let's say i put the vector v so now you just evaluate the directional derivatives okay so you have a specific point given so now you obtain that the answer the answer that we obtain there is uh, what is that so you got 28 over 3 but on the second question we we don't want to we don't uh, specify the direction but you have to determine the direction so that you have the maximum value of the directional derivative so the objective here we want the directional derivative of the fun function given 
uh, maximum and also at the same time minimum. So the question here, so what is the direction that we need to follow? So let's say you are climbing up the hill. So you know the function of the of the hill, for example, and you know the point that you are standing now. But you have no idea uh, that you have to follow. You have no idea the direction that you have to follow. But you just want to know that um, uh, what where is the direction, what is the direction so that I have the maximum slope. Or what, uh, what is the direction uh, at this point, from this point. Uh, that I can have the minimum slope. So, then, uh, how can, or what is the formula that, that can help you to determine the maximum and also minimum value of the directional derivatives? Okay, so in this case, how can you answer this? You just obtain the, uh, the formula of this gradient F. Okay, where actually I already, uh, I think when we have the gradient from, from the previous nodes, we have done the gradient F, right? And actually, the gradient F that you evaluate that is telling you the maximum or the minimum rate of change or uh, the slope. Okay. So, uh, if you want to have the, uh, the maximum, uh, the I mean, what is the direction so that you have a maximum? So uh, you have the gradient F, and then how about the net? How about the minimum? Because we know that max and min, they just have a different direction, opposite direction. So if it is max, so this is max. So the min should be you just put negative sign. So that is minimum direction. But in terms of uh, magnitude, the value is so now maximum so to get the maximum value maximum value so you just have the magnitude of the gradient f but if you want to have the minimum value or minimum magnitude you just evaluate the magnitude of the gradient f and then you put the negative value outside because if you choose the negative gradient f and when you uh, evaluate the magnitude so the negative gone right so then we just put a negative outside so that if the answer here you got 4 that is maximum value so the minimum value is minus 4 that's it. so that is the idea of the uh, what is the direction so that your directional derivative is the maximum so you have to use this formula if, and what is the uh, direction so that you have uh, uh, the, the value of the direction derivative is the minimum one so this is the direction which is from the vector itself but the magnitude the value it should be the magnitude so that is the uh, um, this question is actually related to the uh, topic which is we have the, the directional maximum minimum okay which means that and this one is part of the optimal direction property of the gradient. So meaning that you can use the gradient uh, to find out the optimal direction. So in the gradient, there is optimal direction. Uh, sorry. In the gradient of the scalar function, uh, there is the optimal direction property. So which is this one. So how, what is the problem that normally we have? Just like this question. Okay, so normally the first question, uh, you just uh, evaluate directional derivative for the given direction. And for the second and the third question asking for, tell us what is direction so that you have the maximum and minimum uh, value of directional derivative. So then they ask about the, what is the magnitude of this max and mean uh, of the directional derivative. So you just uh, find the or evaluate or just uh, find the magnitude of the vector that you obtain in the first in the second question here okay so then to uh, to answer the question number two what you have to do is you just so now to get the solution 
you can just evaluate the gradient f. In this case, you are given phi, so the gradient phi. So you have a vector right, uh, phi x, phi x, phi y, phi z. And we already evaluate that. So you obtain here, so minus 4, minus 4, 12. So that is the um, direction for the maximum. So this is maximum uh, direction. Maximum direction of the directional derivatives. And then minimum. Then you have just put the negative gradient phi at the point given. So you just put the negative. So it becomes 4, 4 minus 12. So that is the answer for second question. So what is the direction for having the maximum direction derivatives? So this is the maximum direction. And this one is the minimum direction. Okay, and then what is the magnitude? So, uh, then we can say that uh, to answer, so I have no enough space. So, to answer the question number three, uh, here, so the, the maximum uh, value or magnitude is given by the magnitude of the grade F, which means uh, grade 5, or grade F, which is uh, 4 square plus 4 square plus 12 square. So, what's the answer? Mm, you will have square root 11, 4. Or you can give in decimal form. And the minimum value, you just put the minus sign which is negative, the magnitude of grade, phi or f, negative 4, square root e, 11. That's it. Okay? So, simple. So, I would say that, um, I would say that for answering the question number 2 and question number 3 is more easier than the directional derivative for specific direction itself.